Sure. Hey, Liberty fans, and welcome to Liberty FM. This is Felicia and Francois recapping Sunday's game where the Liberty faced the Minnesota Lynx. We knew this game was going to be a battle and possibly give a glimpse of the playoff picture. The Lynx were ready, but unfortunately, the Liberty were not as they lost this one by a score of 88 to 79. Francois, let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. And unfortunately, uh, we came to a conclusion today that the, the playoffs are going to be a tough road. I know that the Liberty have been sort of cruising this season, but I feel like they haven't been totally dominant. Mm -hmm. And we said before that the Minnesota Lynx was the team that we kind of feared uh, coming into the, the playoff. And I think rightfully so, because they gave us a lesson uh, in this game today. And um, after, you know, two blowouts against the, the Dallas Wings, the, obviously the Dallas Wings this season are just, you know, under par. But I think it was good to kind of have a sort of like nice flowing, you know, of games for, for the Liberty in order to get ready for, for the Lynx. And even Sabrina had mentioned that this was a statement game uh, saying that she was excited to see how much the team has grown since uh, they last faced them in early July. And fortunately, I have to tell you, Sabrina, that it wasn't maybe the game that you expected. And uh, defensively, we got to see some of the the old ghosts uh, of the Liberty from earlier this season where they were always late uh, in the switching and on defense. And Minnesota just pounded on them and, and expose some of the weaknesses of the Liberty. So I know it's it's still like the regular season, but Felicia, I'm I'm a little a little bit worried for the Liberty. What do you what do you think? I'm very worried. I think if the Liberty don't get it together, they're gonna have even if they make the finals, they're gonna have another loss in the finals. They're they're not gonna get over this hump if they don't figure out how to contain Minnesota. They showed sparks of it, I think, just in the fourth quarter, but you need it for all four quarters, not just one. And the Liberty, they just they were just on the back foot today. It's just like Minnesota came out, punched them in the mouth, and they kept punching. The Liberty made some runs to try to combat that and but they couldn't stop the bleeding. Minnesota is a well-oiled machine. We said that about the Aces last year. We said everything is clicking. They move the ball well. They know each other well. And you have to admit, for Minnesota, when you think about it, some of these players just came on the team this year. Yeah. So credit to them, credit to their coaching staff that they look so in sync with each other this year and it's kind of for some players it's their first year together and that they're playing so well they just they look like the team to beat I know what the standings may show but really in these last few games of even seeing Minnesota against other teams they play like a number one team they play like they're the team that you have to have to beat not the Liberty and I think the Liberty took a gut punch today and they have to really come together and figure out how bad they want a championship in New York. Yeah, I mean it was it was interesting because before the game Cheryl Reeves was asked quite a bit, you know, to make comparisons between the 2017 Minnesota Lynx that uh won the, the last title in the history of the of the team and the team that she has today because basically the stats are very similar in terms of defensive rating, uh offensive efficiency, but I think she she tried to you know make people understand that those are two different eras. Obviously, like they had all the famous like Maya Moore uh, back in the day, but she was like saying that the game has changed. But what was interesting though uh, was the fact that even to her, she was surprised like how well and how quick the team gel mm -hmm. and perform the way they've been performing all season. I think they targeted certain players. They had an idea of what they needed for the team. Mm -hmm. But I think everybody and the fact that even her is surprised about how well they've been uh, you know, playing uh, says a lot about the quality of the players and how you know, unified they are as a team. And I think that, that show in that game against the Liberty, 
the way they started this game, there was never a time where you felt like the Minnesota Lynx like took a bad shot. You know, they were really trying to make the defense work until they had the best possible shot, which made it really hard for the, the Liberty on defense. Mm -hmm. uh, Stewie, after the game, said uh, it's really hard when you have a team that was moving the ball so well for like 22 seconds and then two seconds before the end of the 24-second uh, clock, they get that perfect shot that kills the defense and really like, you know, for your morale, it, it's tough because there were times where the Liberty put a bit more intensity on defense Mm -hmm. and kind of deserve to to get a stop but they didn't and uh you know I think what is frustrating for me is the fact that they had to say after the game that maybe it was good to have that kind of loss to have you know this punch in the mouth so that they could rectify those things uh moving forward and coming to the playoff but I feel like at this point of the season you should not have this punch in the mouth you should be automatic like let's get locked in let's have 40 minutes of intense basketball and you felt like first quarter the, the Liberty didn't show up you know when you're losing uh, 30 to 17 in the first quarter. Do you struggle so much defensively when it comes to communication? You know, I always felt like they were late on rotations, uh, always going on the screen. And sadly, like the Minnesota Lynx make them pay almost every single time. Yeah. And you felt like they're not going to get away with, with this, you know, and, and yeah. No, they're, you know, Minnesota. I have to give credit to them because shot selection and just the quality of their shots were, it was just excellent. You can see it in the percentages. Their field goal percentage, 53%. Liberty, 39%. You know, three-point percentage for the Lynx, 50%. The Liberty, 28.6%. That's not going to get you a win, no matter how hard you try. <laughs> like it, The Minnesota Lynx, Every shot you just felt like is going in. And every person, one through five, on that court believes in each other and themselves that they can take the shot, that they can have the hot hand at any moment. And I feel like on the Liberty, you felt like they were passing to get Sabrina a shot, to get Stewie the shot, or maybe JJ. If JJ's not in there, maybe Niara. Like, everyone doesn't, everyone's playing to pass to the top player instead of seeing for themselves, like, go get that shot. Like, go make it happen. And that's just not how they play. And Minnesota plays that way. They wait until they get the best shot. And even if the best shot is not there for them, they're going to be aggressive. One of them is going to be aggressive. There's nobody on that team that you can say, oh, we'll, we'll leave her over there. She will live with if she can make the shot or not. No, everyone is dangerous on the court. And for the Liberty today, the only person that was really dangerous on the court was Stewie. Yeah. When you have one person that pretty much is in double figures... I mean, yes, Sabrina, I think what Sabrina had... She was the only player, the only player besides yeah. Tui that was in double figures. She had double figures. However, she was two for 12 from the three-point line. That is not like... She had most of the threes that were missed in this game by the Liberty. Stewie with 38 points, 18 rebounds, three for six from the three-point line, 12 for 27 field goal percentage. I mean, you you can't just have Stewie as the only one and when for on the other end for Minnesota, everyone's in double figures except one person. Everybody else, four out of the five starters were all in double figures. They were making their shots. So until the Liberty cleaned that up, and to be honest, the Liberty's shot selections have been going down mm. in the last few games, I would say. In the last in this second half of the season, their shot selections, their their percentages have gone down. Like as of late. And I think that's something they have to clean up because everybody else is coming up. People are fighting for that eighth spot and they're giving it their all. The aces are looking like aces of last year in a way. Mm. And they're fighting to, you know, to get back into the finals too. It this is this is a tough playoff pitcher and the Liberty may be sitting at the number one seed, but it doesn't feel like they're the number one team right now. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, you know, the, the results of the Liberty after the Olympic break, um, they lost against Connecticut mm -hmm. with this revamp uh, lineup with Mabry. Uh, they had a horrendous loss against the Sparks. Yeah. Uh, they lost against uh, Minnesota. 
and they barely won against the Aces who didn't have Asia Wilson. Right. So the top three teams behind you, you know, beat you or were close to beat you without the superstar. So it's a little bit worrying because if you want to win the title, you're going to have to beat those teams. And, you know, I wish that maybe those uh, sort of games happen earlier in the season rather than now. Um, but they're going to have to talk. Uh, with one another. I mean, it took quite a bit of time for the players to uh, show up to uh, the press uh, conference after the game because I'm sure they must have had a, a conversation in the locker room. Uh, Sandy, you know, expressed her feelings to the team about how frustrated she was and the lack of urgency uh, from the team. So, you know, I think you mentioned Stewie. Uh, and we mentioned before how crucial her leadership is going to be mm-hmm. uh, in the playoff. And even someone like Vandersloot, who won a title before and know what it's like. She played with players like Candace Parker, yeah. you know, people that were very vocal, that had tremendous leadership. And they're going to have to talk to the rest of the team because, you know, that's something that often came up last year, you know, during the regular season of the playoff is the the mentality of the team, whether they have the mental strength to yeah. overcome challenges. Yeah. And, um, you know, after the game, uh, Jackie Powell mentioned to Sabrina whether that game was reminiscent of the Liberty of, of last year. And I, I, I don't think Sabrina took it very well because... They definitely want to put that season behind them, and and it's a different team, different season. But obviously, the critics of the Liberty are always going to bring it up until they prove wrong. Yeah. And so that is something that they're going to have to discuss, you know, leading to the playoffs that are coming very soon in pretty much a week time. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's that's something that they're going to have to figure out. But I think what was very interesting was Leonie Fiebisch mentioned after the game how cohesive uh, Minnesota's ball movement uh, was and also the defensive strategies uh, that they had that made it very difficult for the Liberty. I think, you know, um, Sabrina was definitely didn't shy away from the fact that she had a terrible shooting night. You know, she kind of put it to the fact that, you know, shot selection was not always the best. But also she mentioned the, the defense from Minnesota because they had a way to make it seem like she had space and she could take the shot. Mm-hmm. And then she said, next thing you know, there's like one or two players that are like pressing me in and, and yeah. you know, kind of forcing me to rush the shot. So, you know, I, I saw quite a few times where they were putting a lot of pressure on Sabrina. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that's something that she's going to have to figure out how to be more composed, how to maybe, you know, look for teammates and, and continue to have like ball movement. <laughs> yeah, but or like Minnesota that never tries to, like, force a shot. So that's, I don't know, that's something that they're going to have to look at, uh, you know, the, the tape and, and sort of discuss it and, and see what they could do better uh, moving forward. but I am surprised that they didn't play more for Phoebish. I think she has been such a bright spot for yeah. them this season. And a lot of times when, whether it's, you know, teams, double team JJ or Stewie or Sabrina, they tend to get draw more of the focus that she gets open and can be more aggressive. And I, And I think that is something they need to do a little bit more. She is the person to me that you need to involve way more, not just defensively, but offensively. Her defensive presence is stellar, but you need to get her involved more offensively. She needs to get to the basket. She needs to get a three ball in there. She needs to be aggressive, but you got to get to her. Like I think Phoebish is so used to passing yeah, and she she just when she gets it, she automatically is looking for Stewie or Sav or getting it to someone else. And I think you you really gotta use her so that when Sab is under pressure, if Phoebish is on the court, she needs to find somebody because usually Sabrina was getting double teamed and that left somebody open. But by the time she could even pass the ball, they're still looking to get Sabrina or Stewie the ball, and it's like be aggressive, go to the basket. And when Stewie started to really get aggressive. In the paint, you saw fouls coming. You you saw the shots going down. You saw her pushing. Again, you're right. Stewie and Sloot are the veterans on this team, and they've won championships. They know what it takes, and you can see the way Stewie was playing. Ah, Stewie, you got to give her her flowers. Yes. She had, even though they lost, she had an MVP performance today because 
She was everywhere on the court. 38 points, 18 everywhere rebounds. Everywhere on the court. Yeah. Like, it was amazing to watch. It's unfortunate that they lost, but it was crazy. If one player missed a shot, she was right there to clean it up and, and get the shot. Like, I just think this is such a tough loss, even for Stewie, because she, she did so great. Because your other teammates, just they weren't there today. And Minnesota took advantage of that with their quality of shots that... They just kept going down. Every time the Liberty would miss, Minnesota would make their shot. You fall into a hole. You keep falling into a hole. At one point, they had a 26-point lead yes. somewhere in the third or early fourth quarter. That's not going to get it. That's not going to get it done. And you can't throw up just Hail Mary threes half the time at these unnecessary shots when what was working for you was driving to the basket getting fouls like that is what worked for you that's what worked for them even against the Las in the Las Vegas game yeah they started just going to the basket and yeah. that they they laid off the three ball and they started going to the basket and that's what helped them and it was too late because by the time they started to do that and make that run it was too late to kind of they got into this hole that was just hard to get out of yeah no you, you're definitely right I mean to go back on on Phoebe she, obviously her role is very different uh with the Liberty than mm-hmm. the role that she had in Spain where she's the go-to player uh here she's the the player that kind of complements the stars mm-hmm. um but like you said they they would usually have you know sets that allows her to have those open free point sh- uh, shots but this time around it, it didn't happen sabrina forced a lot of shots benaja was not a usual self uh today uh she had a free to start the game but then afterwards you know very very, very off, quiet. yeah, very quiet. Uh, Stewie, I mean, she was taking advantage of what the defense was offering her. She attacked the basket constantly, and we get a lot of easy basket, you know, going to uh, driving to uh, to the basket or provoking fouls and getting points to the line. Mm-hmm. At some point, they fed JJ, and she was effective for a little bit, but then they kind of stopped doing that, I'm and and they couldn't get stops either. So. You know, if you start missing one or two shots and then on the other end, they keep scoring freeze. Uh, Bridget Carlton, I mean, she had quite a knife. Five for seven from the three-point line. I mean, she was, for me, the MVP of the Commissioner's Cup, even Mm -hmm. though they gave it to uh, Nafisa Collier. She was the player that really made a difference uh, in that Commissioner's Cup final against the Liberty. And once again, she was open uh, you know, the Minnesota Lynx, you know, did everything they could to get some of their players open and she didn't miss those opportunities. So great game from her. But I will also have to say that when you have players like Courtney Williams and Nafisa Collier on the pick and roll, that it's must be such time. such a headache defensively. It's deadly every time. Because the way Nafisa Collier sets a screen, it makes it really hard yeah. for you to get over the screen. Yeah. And and so therefore the the Liberty players on defense had no other choice but to go under, under the, the screen, screen. and couldn't it was to make them pay every single time because then she would use that space to have a, a, a killer of a mid range or sort of play the pick and roll with Nafisa and Nafisa you know she's so versatile versatile that she could do pretty much whatever she wants yeah. so if there wasn't an Asia Wilson in this world. Um, Nafisa Kyle will probably be MVP this season, but because Asia is on another planet, she will get the MVP, but Nafisa Kyle is right behind, uh, and when you have two players of that caliber on your team, that's going to make it really difficult for, for the defense. Yeah. But as you said, you know, it's the third quarter, I thought that maybe a halftime will help the Liberty discuss certain things and come back strong. Uh, but it wasn't the case, and uh, the the lead blew up to like 26 points uh, at some point, and you could tell Sandy was really struggling to figure out a, a lineup that would work, and then all of a sudden it was funny because you know we had friends coming over for the for the game uh, for the first time, and I was telling them watch because you know when sometimes the Liberty don't play so well and kind of like mm-hmm. up and down, it's kind of unexplicable where. In the third or the fourth quarter, the crowd sort of switch mm-hmm. and all of a sudden like pushes the team like so much mm-hmm. that it kind of clicks in, in the Liberty's mind and they feel that extra energy yeah. and, you know, come back and, and play great for like five or ten minutes. And 
That's exactly what happened after they were down by 26. Sandy decided to put this lineup of uh, Sabrina Inescu, Brianna Stewart, Leonie Fibish, Nyara Saboli, and I think Kayla Foran. Yeah. And they, she made it work. Like, this lineup was great. Uh, Nyara Saboli gave us tremendous minutes. And yeah. I think we barely saw JJ in the second half. Yeah. But because Nyara was doing everything so well, she was defending, putting a lot of pressure on the Minnesota Lynx bigs. She was... You know, quick on offense, quick on the pick and roll, quick to attack the basket. Tui, like you said, was everywhere. Like, I mean, if you if you didn't feel motivated, you know, seeing your 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 leader, your MVP, like doing everything, diving on every ball, jumping on every rebound, then I don't know what else would motivate you. But I definitely felt like that impacted the team, her leadership. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, they they were they were down by nine at some at, at some point. They were down by eight. eight. Yeah, she. Made made a three that brought it down to eight and you felt like anything is possible you yeah. know but i i guess it wasn't enough i mean when you come from too far like it, it's hard you know in 10 minutes to completely change the game they had a you know when they got down by eight you know the score was 72 to 80 there were still some minutes left and it, it wasn't a, a I want to say maybe three to four minutes left. And they started taking threes. Now, you need some threes in there, but they need to be smart. (laughs) Like, you need to look for a good three, not just taking it so quickly. Because Minnesota has been shooting at such a high level that if you miss, it's a high probability they're going to make buckets on the other end. And that's what happened. You know, they got down to an eight-point game. And unfortunately, they got away from it. They started to shoot up threes out of nowhere. And you're just like, go to the basket. This has been your bread and butter in the fourth quarter. (laughs) Go to the basket. If the three is available, like when Stewie took those three, she was wide open. Mm. No reason not to take it. But after that, it just, it fell apart again. And, you know, it's hard. Like, when you are down by 26 and you have only one quarter to try to change things, I think if they were down by 26 in the second quarter and then came in the third and the fourth, I believe the Liberty could have won this game. But one quarter to switch that all around is really, really difficult. And even though Brianna just, she did an amazing job on the court, it was just too much. They built such a hole that, you know, Minnesota was still going to score. Yeah. They didn't have to score much. I mean, the Liberty won the fourth quarter 29 to 14. I mean, that's amazing. However, you know, Minnesota won quarters one and three by quite a lot. <laughs> so once you put yourself in a hole, it's going to be really hard against such a great defensive team like the Minnesota Lynx. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I told you before, I, I still feel like I haven't watched uh, the Liberty having a 40 minutes complete basketball yeah. game, you know, from start to finish. Mm-hmm. You know, they had 20 great minutes or 30 great minutes in, in previous games, but they haven't been able so far this season to to play a full game with intensity, locked in, let's kill this team, yeah. uh, no excuses. And I wish that if they had put that intensity that they put in the fourth from the get-go, they would have won this game. But unfortunately, they didn't. And, you know, that's going to bring a lot of doubts in terms of whether this team can make it or not. I mean, they have the stats and the records to show that they are capable and, and you know, in the past teams that have had the stats that the Liberty had this season, mm-hmm. uh, they would usually win the title. But this league is, is better, keeps getting better and better. And you, when you look at what's ahead, you know, that's going to be a, a, a tough road. So, you know, with what I've seen from Minnesota, for me, they are the number one team to beat in the playoff. I think they are the team that, a lot of people might fear. They are right now in second position and will have the home court advantage up until the final. Uh, and, you know, if the Liberty get the job done uh, in Washington or at home against Atlanta, uh, they will have the home court advantage for all the playoffs and therefore Minnesota would not have it. But it doesn't seem like it would be a problem for Minnesota based on what we've seen so far. But 
I think Minnesota is definitely the team to beat. You mentioned the Aces that just beat uh, Connecticut and quite comfortably and convincingly. So I feel like Vegas and Minnesota are the two teams to uh, really, you know, be on the lookout uh, for the title and, and for the, the Liberties, uh, you know, path to the to the title. Now, the only good thing I can come up with after a game like this against Minnesota is that, you know, the next time, if we face them the next time, that means that we'll be in the final. And that's the only consolation prize I would I would give to the Liberty today. Yeah, I mean, the that might be a consolation prize, but to me, looking at the standing so far, you still have the Aces in fourth place. And even if the Liberty get through the first round of the playoffs, there's a high, you know, they're, they will likely face the winner as it stands. They would face the winner of the Aces and Seattle Storm matchup. Likely the Aces could take the Storm. We don't yeah. know. But, you know, the Aces barely won against the Sparks today, <laughs> which was surprising. So, you know, it with the Aces coming up and playing the way they are, Chelsea Gray is even playing a lot better than she has been. They're still a scary team to me. So I don't count them out ever, you know. So they have a tough road. The first part of the playoffs might be a little easier for them, but the semis and the final is going to be tough. And mm. so they have to lock in, but it can't just be – one or two they all have to lock in and I think yeah Stewie may need to have a talk with the team she knows what it takes to win also salute they know the pressure they know what to do um it's hard because obviously the league has gotten better over the years so it, it only gets harder and that's a great thing because you have more teams coming up you have great players coming out there but for the Liberty they have to show grit they can't just let it just felt like Minnesota just knows their number yeah. and just took control. And for the Liberty, they have to play with pace. They have to uh, stay in communication. Stop going under screens. Mm. <laughs> and even though Minnesota is really great at it, they ha they can battle them. And I think they showed that spark in the fourth quarter, led by led by Stewie. But they're going to have to play better. They're going to have to play for other players as well. They have to have that confidence just like Minnesota, that one through five, all of you can score. All of you can have the hot hand at any moment on the court because that's what I saw from Minnesota. I didn't see that from the Liberty today. Yeah, I think one final thing that comes to uh, to mind is, is the fact that the Liberty also need to switch things up a little bit, surprise... Yeah. Uh, their opponents because I think sometimes they're a little too predictable. Yeah. yeah yes, obviously yeah. they, you know, their offense, the way they runs their offense. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we know that they need ball movement, but you know, it it leaves the door op the door open to creativity. But I think that sometimes defensively they're a little too predictable. Yeah. And what was interesting was that uh, Kayla Foran after the game. When she was asked about, you know, how they managed to, to come back into this game, um, she said that they kind of offered something different uh, defensively, uh, where they had the, the triangle defense um, uh, with kind of like three in the paint as a triangle shape and then two uh, in the perimeter. And she said that, you know, it offered something different, something that, uh, Minnesota's offense was not expecting and that's how they were able to surprise them and I think maybe they need more of that like you know switchability in in what they do so mm -hmm. so that it could surprise you know their opponents but that also shows coaching you know Cheryl Reeves has managed to be in games and switch things up make the adjustments early the Liberty's coaching staff they tend to make adjustments quite late mm. To the point where even if the Liberty win, is by the skin of their teeth. And to me, you're going to have to do better than that. Just like the players have to do better, the coaching staff has to do better. Because Cheryl Reeves also is doing a master class on the other end of <laughs> switching things up. Knowing when to put people in, pull people out. And even when you put other people in, they're doing just as well. Like yeah. I know she might be a little surprised that they're doing as well as they are, but... She has a really good team and she's managed to get them in a place where you can make the adjustments. And even if you take one person out, the next person is just as lethal. And 
they have they have depth and and they use that to their advantage today yeah so that's it for for this game i guess um so that was tough um but you know tomorrow is another day mm -hmm. and uh let's hope that the liberty finish the season strong they have two games left uh tuesday away in against the mystics who you know for a short moment of time we're out of the the playoff race yeah. uh but then chicago lost against phoenix at home and so therefore at this very moment the mystic are back in the a spot and would potentially be uh face the new york liberty in the first round uh the new york liberty in a way are going to be the team that kind of decides who's going to be the ace since they're going to face uh the mystics on tuesday and then on thursday the last uh game of the regular season at home against the Atlanta Dream. Um, so we will know uh, by Thursday who would face the New York Liberty uh, on Sunday for the first game uh, of the playoffs. So we'll be covering probably after the Atlanta game uh, to sort of recap uh, the game against Washington and the game against Atlanta and kind of project ourselves afterwards towards the, the playoff. But thank you so much, guys, for listening to our podcast and, you know, the support that you're giving us. It, it means a lot. But as we always say, Felicia, let's go, Liberty! Liberty!